concept zero for polarization is to understand that all transverse waves have an angle of polarization. So for this guy here, this is a transverse wave, right? And these are actually transverse standing waves, I think, right? And this plane of polarization is up and down, isn't it? Yeah? That's the plane of polarization. And I could, of course, set up standing waves. Now they're at some angle, aren't they? Right? Now they're, whoa, I'm trying to get horizontal. I'm not quite getting that, right? But I'm, I'm at some other angle, aren't I? Isn't this a different angle of polarization? Yeah? What if I get like this guy going? What's that angle? It's like, I don't know, it's like a lot of different angles, isn't it? Yeah? So, so a wave train can actually be a mixture of different polarizations. That is, it's going in a circle or something like that, right? Okay? But the concept zero is just that any transverse wave you have has a direction that it is polarized. Longitudinal waves, not so much. I don't think longitudinal waves can be, can be, those are the ones where like everything's going like this, like sound, right? Those can't be polarized, but any transverse wave, if the, what transverse means that it's across the direction of motion, the wave is going that way, but the medium is going up and down. Yeah? The wave is going that way, but the medium is going side to side. The wave is going that way, but the medium is going at a 45 degree angle. Yes? These are all planes of polarization, and all transverse waves have that. Okay? So that was concept zero. Okay? Concept one, concept one is that light is a transverse wave. It's weird, right? But to make a light wave, all I have to do is, well, really, this is how your cell phone is making, not light waves, but radio waves, which are just low frequency electromagnetic waves, right? Your cell phone has a little antenna that goes like this, right? And at one instant, this side's positive and this side's negative. And then in the next instant, this side is negative and this side's positive. Well, when it's this way, the, mag the electric field is like that. And when it's the other way, the electric field is like this. And if you take an electric field and you change it, right, and you say make it go away, electric fields contain energy, so a collapsing electric field creates, well, it creates a magnetic field, as it were, right? This is one of Maxwell's laws. We don't know why this is, but it just is, right? So, so the energy that was in that electric field turns into a magnetic field. That collapses, turns into a electric field, turns into a magnetic field, turns into an electric field, right? And they are at right angles to each other, so that's what they're trying to draw here. Here the electric field is up and down, the magnetic field is maybe horizontal, right? They're exactly right angles to each other because that's the way the law works, right? Okay, so this is what can travel through any space that can have a magnetic field in it, which is nothing, right? So electromagnetic waves are these very strange things that way, right? Now when we refer to the angle of polarization of an electromagnetic wave, we could talk about the magnetic field, or we could talk about the electric field. We talk about the electric field by default. So when we say a wave is polarized, we would say this one is vertically polarized. We wouldn't say that it's horizontally polarized, even though it's kind of crazy both, isn't it? Right? So it's sort of like we're, we're biased for the electric field. And that's because that's the one that we can like short circuit, and when we make polarized filters, that's the one we manipulate, right? We essentially don't allow things that have an electric field in another direction, right? So that's why. So this thing here, this wave as it's drawn, has a vertical, if you believe, that set of axes there. It's got a direct in the y and negative y direction. It's in the y, parallel with the y axis there. Okay. There's the spring, right? So you can imagine with the spring, we could devise a filter that would allow the spring to maybe only move up and down, but not side to side. Yes? Ah. What if we could do that with light? Well, we can do that with light. Voila. Here, this is not just a piece of tinted glass. This, or plastic, as it were. Okay, this is a polarized filter. And the reason, and I'm reminded of Calvin and Hobbes here, the reason it looks tinted is that polarized light, this thing is polarizing the light. It's polarizing, it's only letting light through that's polarized vertically, yeah? Well, light, as it comes to me, is polarized in all different ways. About half the light is polarized vertically, isn't it? Yeah? No, not only, I'm not just saying perfectly vertically, I'm just saying any component vertically, right? About half is, is of the light that's coming to me has a component or is vertical, right, like that. And if I tilt it this way, about half is horizontal, right? And that's why it just sort of looks like that, okay? So if I put this on the overhead and turn it on, okay, and make the projector do a black screen, okay? 
there it is, you can say, this is about half as bright as that. Huh? Isn't that cool? Let's have a little applause for that. Okay, let's go on to the formulas, because that's all the demonstrations. No, wait, wait, wait. I've got two filters. I have two filters. Okay. Here, this filter is also a polarized filter, right? So I can put them both on there and I can block more of the screen, huh? Isn't that cool? And now there's like half the light basically getting through that. Put them on top of each other. Okay, there we go. Now, if I do that, of course, now you can see that the light is vertically polarized and it goes through the first one and there's some loss. You can see they're not 100%, right? Because all of it should go through the other one, but the other one makes it a little darker. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now should we do the formula? Yeah. Now what should we do? Turn it. Turn it. All right. I will turn them. Now they're, now they're polarizing horizontally. One so it's up, one so it's down. Okay. Oh, put them on top of each other. Okay. Da da da! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, okay, yeah. Suddenly, we're, we're looking at the set whose member. That's the demonstration. That's what it is, isn't it? We've got to do that, right? Because they're like, God, he's stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the set whose, member, set whose members are all light that is both per polarized vertically and horizontally. There is no light that is both vertically and horizontally, right? So you could use these. This would be a very expensive way to make a spotlight less bright. You could just turn this, right? Only polarized filters are very expensive, and you can just do it with an aperture, you know. There we go. And you can make those of metal, so when they get hot, they can just cool them off of the fan. Isn't that kind of neat, huh? Oh, yeah. Very nice, huh? Okay, so basically there's a formula that deals with there's a, when there's an angle between these guys, right? There's some other angle here. And obviously, when it's 90 degrees, we have to let, like, no light through, don't we? So basically, this problem goes like this. Without a filter there, we get the entire intensity. With one filter, we get half of the light through. And then of that half that's left, we can manipulate that with this formula, right? That's, what we're, that's where we're headed. Okay. So let's turn that off. Turn that on, Ta -da. right? And so we talk about something called the intensity of the light, right? And the intensity of the light is the, um, and we can talk about I naught. That just means it's the incident intensity. It is the, it is basically the power per area, right? It's the watts per square meter um, of light that's coming in, right? The solar constant is like about a thousand watts. That right there, bright sunlight is about a thousand watts per square meter. Portland is generally in the winter about 300 watts per square meter. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Hey, my sister, who's a solar scientist, will look outside and go, "Oh God, it's got to be like a 300 watt per square meter day, right?" It just means it's dark. It's very dark. We're at the bottom of lots of clouds, right? Okay. Two polarizers. We've seen that, right? So if it's more than one polarizer. Right, and you're you're dealing with polarized light. Then, the resulting light that makes it through the second filter, okay, is the incident light times the cosine of the angle between them squared. I like to write it that way because I'm a computer science major, but cos squared just means the cosine squared, doesn't it? Okay, so the way these problems work is if we have unpolarized light, that unpolarized light might be, you know, something, let's say 100 watts per square meter. What makes it through the first one is 50 watts per square meter. What makes it through the second one is, well, then we take that half of the light that is hitting this one, right, that's polarized, and we do this formula with it. And I'll do an example of that for you. So I think I'll, I don't know, I think it'll become more clear. Hey, go back. 